If you were alive in the 90s and watching late night TV, you most likely remember Don Laper's voice. Laper was a TV infomercial king known for his tiny classified ads and the greatest vitamin in the world. He promised people the dream of wealth and good health. He wanted you to believe that all his outrageous promises could come true, but they never did. Laper was the king of 90s infomercials, but just how did people fall for his outrageous promises? Laper's story began in the late 1980s when Don Laper started his first business, a dating service called the 1828 Club. Laper wasn't born the king of making money, and his dating service flopped hard. He folded Chapter 7 bankruptcy for the 1828 Club shortly after meeting and marrying his wife, whom he did not meet using his dating service. In 1990, he started a credit repair company with his wife. The pair sold prospective customers on the promise of fast credit cards with adequate balances. Instead, consumers would get contact information for banks that were more likely to give loans to people with bad credit. The Arizona Attorney General decided to charge the couple with violating the Consumer Fraud Act of Arizona. The outcome of this case banned the couple from engaging in any credit repair services. In addition, the couple had to pay $5,000 in restitution. Failure didn't stop Laper, who started selling a booklet that contained a secret loophole to pay off a mortgage using a backdoor insurance refund through the Federal Housing Authority. However, this company, along with the advice he was giving, failed. At the same time, Laper began to sell 900 phone lines. If you don't know, 900 numbers are similar to 1-800 numbers, except the person calling is paying for a particular piece of information or entertainment, not just customer service. 900 numbers started back in the 80s with AT&T, who would charge callers 50 cents to dial a number. The service was made popular by ABC Nightline, who hosted a call-in poll for who won the Reagan versus Carter presidential debate. By the 90s, 900 numbers were used for adult phone call services, for get-rich-quick schemes, and for pay-per-minute updates on sports. Laper claimed that he made $50,000 per week selling 900 numbers by placing his tiny classified ads in the newspaper. Before there was SEO, or search engine optimization, there was Don Laper. While he was a scummy salesman, he was great at what he did. In 1992, he started broadcasting the Making Money Show with Don Laper. This was the start of his infomercial career, and Laper would make some bold claims while producing the show. Laper's scripts sound like a modern-day click funnel used by dropshipping gurus and Amazon automation experts. Just like these online gurus, Laper's late-night guru show shows would overpromise and underdeliver. Laper fired off buzz phrases such as easy money, how to make money fast, and easiest ways to make money like he was Google's search bar. In one of Laper's episodes, he talked about vague ways of making millions, including how he makes easy money fast. Laper's golden geese for fast cash were his tiny classified ads. As he describes it, a broke Laper was working at a department store one day when he came across a classified ad for cheap items. He bought these items through a classified ad and sold them for a profit, conveniently using classified ads. The Making Money Show was taking off and Laper was looking more and more like the results of a modern day Google search for making money fast. Go ahead, Google how to make money fast and see how many get rich quick gurus pop up. But before there was Google, there was Don Laper. Call him up and ask, how do I make money fast? And you'll start receiving telemarketing calls offering a variety of services. These services including dating, psychics, booklets, and more. Customers would complain that they did not want these calls and did not sign up for them, but would continue to receive calls with new offers. Customers complained that these offers would continue even after being told no, and that in many cases, it was a different company with very similar sounding businesses. These businesses all tied back to Laper. Throughout everything that Laper pitched in the 90s, one thing was common. Time Tiny classified ads. Classified ads were like the Facebook marketplace of the 90s. Each newspaper, there was a section of cheap advertisements posted by the public. People might be trying to sell their old desk, looking for a roommate, or gain traction for their local startup. The classified section was meant to serve regions the same way Facebook marketplace helps individuals sell their item. Unlike front page ads, the classifieds were low cost in comparison. Laper would use these tiny classified ads for marketing his 900 number business, the sale of items he found on liquidation, dating services and more. To continue the comparison, Laper invented modern day drop shipping before the internet was popularized. One of Laper's schemes promised easy money by placing ads for items that could be purchased wholesale from the manufacturer who would fulfill the order themselves. Laper would pay for the cost of the items plus shipping and pocket the profits, claiming never to touch the product in the first place. The way these products were sold was through tiny classified ads that someone could purchase in newspapers all over the country. These tiny classified ads were supposed to be easy 
to make and even easier to profit from. For those who are unfamiliar, dropshipping is the process of selling items online through third-party fulfillment. A seller will post an item for sale. Once the item sells, the seller forwards the order to the manufacturer who fulfills it. Sounds familiar, right? Laper was pushing today's schemes, but through newspapers and infomercials instead of social media. Laper loved the word tiny, from his tiny classified ads to his tiny one-bedroom apartment where he made his fortune. Laper, however, was facing a not-so-tiny problem. At the end of the 1990s, millions of people had seen his late-night infomercials for tiny classified ads. Those who called in were bombarded with additional telemarketing calls, which cost users $850 plus if they were to purchase those products. The Better Business Bureau received complaints that Leaper's companies were slow to ship. When refunds were requested for products purchased, they were slow to arrive if they arrived at all. The BBB warned consumers that Don Leaper and businesses that he was associated with were offering too-good-to-be-true schemes and then not allowing customers to take advantage of the 30-day money-back guarantee. By the early 2000s, tiny classified ads were replaced with online advertising and the gig was up for Leaper. In 1999, Laper declared bankruptcy. Again, companies' assets were liquidated and the buyers of Laper's company carried on business as usual, posting his infomercials and selling the same scam products. Laper was out and Joseph Deal picked up the mantle. Laper denounced the new operator, calling his business practices unethical. Why? Because Deal was as big a scammer as Laper. Now that Laper was out of his company, he needed another gig. Laper was friendly with a nutritionist named Doug Grant who peddled various diets, pills, and cures. We use the word nutritionalist loosely, as Grant was nothing but a fraud since his miracle medicines promised unreal results. Laper and Grant joined forces in 2003 with the start of Torica LLC. Doug Grant peddled supplements associated with the greatest for that and the best for this type schemes. Some of these schemes included Optimal Health Systems and VitaQuest International. Grant claimed to be a nutritionist, although online bios do not mention where he went to school. The only mention of schooling was through the American Holistic College of Health, an unaccredited school that would eventually go defunct. Before meeting Laper, Grant pushed products for Optimal Health Systems, a pyramid scheme that sold miracle vitamins and diet plants to hungry entrepreneurs as independent distributors. These products were neither effective nor easy to sell, and most independent distributors claim to have lost hundreds to thousands of dollars. With Grant's ability to manufacture vitamins and Laper's infomercial prowess, the two made a dream sales team. This two-in-one pitch promised viewers a pill that provided all you need for optimal health, as well as one of the greatest financial opportunities. Laper was so bold to suggest that this pill could cure or prevent cancer. For a low cost of $35, a viewer could sign up to be an independent advertiser, or IA. The IA would make $1,000 every time they got 20 people to buy the vitamin. Oh, look, another pyramid scheme. Some quick math tells us that Laper's promise does not add up nor make for a profitable business. The vitamin cost only about $40 plus another $9 for a 30-day supply. Selling 20 vitamins brought in about $900. Grant and Laper promised $1,000 commission for something they could only net $900 in profit. Laper would effectively lose $100 every time one of his IAs hit their quota, and that's not even considering the cost of manufacturing. As with any pyramid scheme, the plan only works if the buyers fail to meet their quotas. If you looked up the greatest vitamin in the world in 2004, you'd get 22,000 results for hundreds of people trying to peddle their vitamins. With an abundance of supply and little to no demand, nobody was making any money of the greatest vitamin in the world. After a few years at the top of the pyramid, the guys got their first warning letter from the FDA. This letter warned the pair that continuing to market their product as a cure for a laundry list of ailments that were not proven by science would bite them in the butt. A year later, in 2006, they received a second warning letter to change the marketing or face the consequences. Laper's scams finally caught up with him. Laper was looking at 41 different criminal charges, including conspiracy, mail fraud, wire fraud, and money laundering. The greatest vitamin in the world was more like the greatest pyramid scheme in the world. According to the charges brought against Laper, his scam brought in $52 million from over 200,000 people. They only ever paid about $6 million in commissions. Sadly, this story does not have a happy ending for anyone. Shortly before the criminal charges came to light, Laper knew the end was near. Once the claims came to light, Laper attempted multiple times to take his own life. Just two days before he was set to go to trial, Laper was successful in his attempt and found unresponsive in his jail cell. Officers attempted to revive him, but it was too late. Laper left us with a heartfelt message on his website, where he stated, It did not work out for me with my vitamins. 
vitamins, but I believe that being willing to fail is part of having a chance at success. Laper was facing a heavy prison sentence for the magnitude of his crimes. At 47 years old, Laper probably would have lived out the rest of his life in jail. Whether he would have been found guilty by a jury, we'll never know. Laper's death left victims without a resolution and the family without a member. Ultimately, a lose-lose situation for everyone involved. Laper moved from the classifieds to the obituary, but his legacy lives on as a get-rich-quick pioneer. Click here to watch one of these next videos.